Have you ever failed in life? Probably. In our limited time on Earth, basically everybody assembles a remarkable collection of failures. Even revered and adored human beings like the Dalai Lama or Nelson Mandela had their magnificent fuck-ups. And even God, if you believe in one, may marvel about some mess he created. I, certainly far from any of these characters, have had numerous failures. Once maybe a bit more publicly than others. However, 13 years ago, I was at the pinnacle of my career. A rising star in politics, Germany's youngest economics minister, then Germany's youngest defense minister ever. And I flew high, very high, too high. And then I fell, hard, rock bottom. Why? Because I lost attention towards things that matter, towards people who matter, and most importantly, towards myself. All too often, our deficiencies and defeats are tightly connected to one simple phenomenon, attention. And why is that? What is attention? Failure can be caused, a proper failure, can be caused by a severe or accidental lack of attention, some distraction, something just slipped your mind. Probably the most common reason for failure. But it can also occur the other way around, by an overdose of attention. It likely happens to public figures, famous actors, politicians, rock stars, folks who are literally in the center of attention. Blinded by the limelight, they lose sight, thinking they are invincible, untouchable. And then an idiotic move or mistake can lead to a reputational fiasco causing attention they had never asked for, I tell you. I know what I'm talking about. And rest assured, even if you're not widely known or a luminary, a proper failure almost always leads to unintended attention. If you crash against a wall, it rarely goes unnoticed with the lovely side effect that all the positive attention you have built up over the years may just vanish within a nanosecond. Buried in the graveyards of high-flying dreams. A moment that leaves you awfully lonesome. We possibly all agree that the immediate consequences of such a misstep are rarely pleasant. They may negatively influence a whole lifetime, haunt you, poison your thoughts. And then it is your mind that happily, cheerfully takes advantage of that situation. Some people say the mind is a bitch. Sounds reasonable. However, I think they're wrong. I think the mind is a pimp because it sells its most dangerous protagonists to one greedy client. And who is that greedy client? It is our attention. And what are the protagonists? You know them all. Fear, shame, endless regret, disgrace. They eat up your attention and form a vicious circle that makes you gradually weaker, sometimes even depressive, 
and prone to slide into even more mistakes. Not a lovely situation to be in. And if you're there, and if you have that kind of feeling, something is going utterly wrong with you, you ask yourself, where's this going to lead to? And at that point, when the mind has taken over and the situation hit me, and I was in that vicious circle, entangled and felt desperate, then I met someone who turned me upside down, who showed me a way out via explaining to me the true magic of attention. That <laughs> sounds absurd, doesn't it? The root cause for my frustrating condition was supposed to be my remedy. After my fall from grace and a good portion of humiliation and malice, I did what probably many people do. I started to avoid people, to avoid attention. I was scared. I had lost friends, or people I mistakenly had called friends, and I had the impression that my whole life, my legacy, was only measured by one embarrassing episode. Eventually, I even left the country, which was a damn hard move. And it took me a couple of months until I reluctantly started to go out again, to see people again, mainly searching for answers. <laughs> and my only question was how to regain a normal, satisfied, hopefully happier life. Uh, one evening at the dinner reception far from home, I bumped into a very well-known person someone who had created a major scandal years ago. <laughs> Headlines all over the world. Shitstorms at record level. A pariah. My story paled and actually dwarfed against his. I watched him that evening. Uh, I was impressed, actually fascinated, by his humor, by his kindness, humility by his balanced appearance. Everybody seemed to love him. And it took me a while to realize that he didn't seek attention, he gave attention. A little later in the evening, he turned to me. I felt uncomfortable. I introduced myself. And then I, I plucked up some courage. May I ask you a question? Of course, he said. But since quite a while, I'm in the deepest crisis of my life. I don't see a way out. I'm desperate. If there's one person in this room here who knows what I'm talking about, it is you. And you seem to be at peace with yourself. Everybody loves you. What the hell did you do? I just feel utterly lost. He asked me to tell him my story. He listened patiently without interrupting. And then he burst out laughing. That's all? What is it with you and you Germans? <laughs> Endless self-flagellation for such a footnote? I didn't, he actually liked the comparison, I didn't, because I had my issues with footnotes at that time, as you know. <laughs> he continued, I get it. Less than a year ago, you were a star. And then, a supernova. You imploded somehow. And now you're afraid of attention. And yes, it's painful to lose attention 
would you get that kind of attention you have right now? But it doesn't make a difference whether the whole nation, or as in my case, the whole world witnesses your fuck up, or just a few people. The mechanisms are the same. People abandon you, they turn their backs, they avoid your presence. And yes, that is painful. But you have to ask yourself, is it worthwhile to fight for their attention? To even give them attention? Are they that relevant for your well-being? Or is this maybe the healthiest moment in your life? I was struck by his argument. It was straightforward. It sounded almost naive. God damn it, I thought to myself, start loving yourself and not the attention of others. And here it was again, the buzzword, attention. He used it a few times in his answer. A simple term, yet so complex in its impact and meaning. My thoughts were interrupted by my new acquaintance. Listen, my friend, I know what you're talking about. I was hungry for attention, addicted, but also scared by its dynamics as I ran the risk of losing control over my life. I was loved and hated, admired and despised, and I am up until today. However, I couldn't care less. I looked at him and said, why is that? He said, here's the trick. Attention appears in different forms. We gain attention, we lose attention. We give attention and we withdraw attention. But we have a tendency to focus on the outside, on the exceptional, not on the normal, not on ourselves. Have you ever allowed yourself three seconds? I looked at her and said, why? Three seconds? What do you mean? Well, three seconds, my friend, are the maximum time span, according to neuroscientists, in which a human being experiences the present, or what we consider as being the present. Everything before, is the past, everything after, the future. The present, these maximum three seconds, are by nature neither negative or positive. They just are. Especially if they are not spoiled by your thoughts. He was right. All too often we shift our attention, our thoughts on things that have happened already. Things that we cannot change any longer. Things we may learn from, but they are, as such, unchangeable. Instead, pure attention is aimed at the present moment, not at an irrevocable past, not at the illusions of an uncertain future. He didn't let me off the hook, that gentleman. There's a last point I'd like to tell you. When you introduced yourself, I certainly knew who you were in your former life. But honestly, I don't give a shit. I'm interested in who you are now. Not who you were a year ago, not who you were 10 minutes ago, but now. At this very moment, you are for me the most valuable, the most precious person. And you should allow yourself from time to time the same mindset. And this is my second trick, connected to the first one. If you've reached that state of pure attention, you may direct it from yourself to the outside, to others. But and this is very important. You have to do it without prejudice and without damaging thoughts. Good night, my friend. He left me standing, baffled. My head was spinning about three seconds in attention and all these things. I think we all have experienced in our life people who gave us 
wants their pure attention. Most rewarding moments might have been your parents, might have been friends, and might have been a stranger. People who don't care who you were and who you might be. People who care who you are. People who don't look over your shoulders while you're talking to them. People who don't come with an agenda. People who are interested in you. People who give you three seconds and allow you to feel your own three seconds. Your most valuable time. Unpolluted presence. True attention, pure attention. Everybody in this room, you and you and you and you up there, and me included, has wasted numerous three seconds in your life on things in the past you cannot change any longer. Everyone has wasted numerous three seconds on the illusions of the future on fears, on dreams, on things that are surreal. And yes, it's hard to give attention without prejudice, I know. Test yourself. What were, what were your thoughts when I entered the stage here? Pure attention or just a couple of other thoughts? I know that guy, I know his past, or this or that. Fair enough. Happens to me as well. Not that often any longer. And I think it is worthwhile trying these three seconds undisturbed again and again, like training a muscle, guiding it to yourself and then to the outside, to others. And you will gain most valuable attention in turn. These exercises have fundamentally changed my life. Today, I am a balanced person. I'm not driven any longer by the expectations of others, by my fears, by my vanities, or by the urge to please. I am a happier person. And if anyone tries to attract the attention of others, or even mine, by pointing at my undeniable failures, and it happens again and again. Do you know what? I don't give a shit. <laughs> and makes them furious. But that's just a footnote. You may wonder who this where well-known person was, I won't tell you, for it doesn't matter. It could have been anyone. It could have been you. And therefore, it is on me to thank you for, how should I frame it? For your attention. And take good care of yourself. And once in a while, just don't give a shit. Thank you.